Hey peeps, um, just wanted to run through this teardown video with you guys. Um, really, maybe just to inspire some of you as well. Um, as you know, like, I don't have a hell of a lot of space. But I still want to make my project car come to life and make it a reality and a dream. So this is really not like a regular teardown where, you know, we inspect everything. Um... And run through like the sort of build biology of the motor. Um, no, this is just really to maybe inspire you guys to, to, to do your own build. And you know, if you don't have space, just work on the street like I'm working on. Um, the motor I bought from an 1996 um, Starlet. And it's in a hell of a good shape. There's not a lot of rust. Um, all the bolts were actually like looking like brand new. Um, yeah, so I can definitely say it was probably owned by an elderly couple. Um, the motor looks mint. Uh, not that that really matters. It's the, the whole point of the purpose of this build is really to rip it apart and to rebuild the engine. Um, so the original engine's got about 53,000 miles on it. Um, and actually, to be honest, it would, it would be a better, a better swap for the one I've got now. Um, if I had extra money, I would literally just swap it into the car I've got and take um, take the existing engine that's in my car, which has got 126,000 miles on, and rather do the build on that. But unfortunately, I don't have the money to to play around. So I'm actually doing it backwards and taking the better engine and sort of boring it out and rebuilding it, etc. Um, what did I learn today about this build? Well... Uh, takes a hell of a long time um, what you're seeing here is on YouTube is about 15 minutes of the build and sorry of the teardown but in reality um, it took me around about two hours to get this all done I will confess it's my first teardown of any engine I've got zero experience with tearing down any engines except like watching a few on on YouTube, I mean, thank thankfully there's so much on YouTube to teach you. Um, so YouTube taught me a little bit about other engines. Um, and then obviously today really taught me a hell of a lot more. Um, you know, experience obviously is the best teacher you can get. Um, yeah. So yeah, it took about two hours and I'm probably about halfway through. A um, couple of things I've got to really do. I've got to pull the cylinder head off. But that I don't really want to do that because I'd have to... Well, I don't want to do that first because I would have to um, cut the... Or at least remove the, the timing belt. But the bolt on the crank... On the crank... Um, the crankshaft pulley... That's seized up. Well, it's sorry, it's not seized up, but it's just really hard to 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 loosen. Um, so I don't want to do anything with the valve cover and the timing check, the timing belt until I can actually loosen the uh, flywheel pulley. Um, I'm gonna have to really think long and hard on what to do and how to do that. Um, so yeah, this is really just phase one of the of the the teardown. Um, once I figure out what to do with what I've just told you earlier, I will have to commence with phase two. So that would be to remove the the pulley on the fl on the fly on the, on the crankshaft pulley, um, remove the timing belt, and then just remove the valve cover. From there, um, I'd have to pull off the oil sump pump. Um, sorry, the oil sump, and unbolt um, the main caps so I can get the con rods out at least loose and then I can push the pistons out so basically remove the pistons and con rods um, I might just for transport purposes move remove the crankshaft um, but once I've got I have to see I have to take the engine apart and into pieces to store it at, at my at my house and it'll stay on my balcony so it's going to be in a waterproof container, but it's going to have to, because I'm going to move it sort of by hand, I've got to have it in manageable chunks. 
Um, so there's probably going to be three or four sort of like uh, runs that I'm going to have to do, you know. Um, so once once I've brought all the parts back to my apartment or flat um, and I've packed it in the waterproof container, um, just for safety purposes of the crankshaft, I'll I'll basically put the crankshaft back into the block. Um, the guy who I ordered, well, who I'm supposed to be ordering pistons from, um, they're called Race Engineering and they're based in Miami, Florida. They're really, really cool guys. Um, I had a chance to chat to um, a guy called John uh, and for quite a lengthy period of time. So what, what he's... Um, what he's told me is because we're trying to get, I'm trying to get really high compression pistons. Um, in Europe, we have like eights, like the Wusner pistons, they have eight, eight, to, eight to one. Um, and then I think some of the Arias, like um, I've, I've seen 8.5 and 8.7 to one. Um, the highest other than that are the Traum, which go up to 10 to one. But race engineering are special as they're advertising their pistons at 10.5 to 1. And John wants me to measure my deck height. And from there, we're going to actually get a very skinny gasket, like a really thin gasket. Um, it's, I think it's com a cometic one. Um, but basically, we're going to up the compression. We're going to do 10.5 plus. We might even go up to 11. So that's... But I've got to literally measure the exact um, deck height. So that means when the engine is in pieces, um, I'm supposed to put the main, you know, the, the block with the main, the main caps um, open um, onto sort of like a steel flat plate. Um, and then I've got to measure from the center, the center line of the bearings or where, sorry, where the actual crank, I hope I'm making sense, but where the actual, um, well, yeah, sorry, where the crank bearings um, and open open caps sit, I've got to go that center line all the way up to the top of the deck. Um, and once I've done that measurement, um, I'm going to email or call John, and then we are going to sit and run through how to tailor my compression ratio based on um, the gasket width. And the reason why we want to measure the, the block height is because we can't go too we can't go too crazy. We don't want to go to the point where you have such a thin gasket that the piston starts smacking the top of the the combustion chamber. So we want to make sure that it's it's going to be a tight a nice high compression, but we don't we also want to make sure that um we're not um we're not going to cause any damage to the piston and the block and you know, we just need we need good clearances. So yeah, so um, I hope you enjoy the rest of this video. I hope it's really informative. Um, if you've got any questions, feel free at any time to drop me a line. I'll be happy to help out where I can. And I'm glad I could um, share this little nugget of, of information with you guys today. Also, over here, you'll, you'll see that I'm actually not removing those bolts properly. I'm going the wrong way. So I'm actually tightening them as opposed to loosening them. Um, I've got to check a bit later to see if perhaps I haven't stripped the aluminium. Um, I realized a bit too late and perhaps my strength is like, oh yeah, relatively strong, strong boy. Um, so I just hope I haven't caused any damage to the threading of that cylinder head over there. So yeah. during the course of these two hours that I was building, well, stripping the engine. Um, the weather was quite miserable, um, overcast and light rain. Uh, the phone, I was using my phone to record, so the phone got a bit wet, um, but luckily the boot or the sort of trunk lid uh, on the hatchback, it, it provided at least a, um, a bit of a rain cover to sort of, you know, protect the old engine. Um, yeah, but I'm um, overall quite, quite happy with, with how it went and like happy with the actual quality of that engine. It looks pretty good. Um, I'll also be weighing the parts 
like I'll be comparing the 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 weight of the connecting rods, the stock 4E FE, to the uh, max speeding rods 4E FTE um, connecting rods, just to just to sort of get a comparison. Also, when those new forged pistons come in, I'll also take a look and see what the what the weight of those are, comparing to the stock Toyota 4E FE pistons. wanted to take the opportunity to also say thanks for watching this video thanks for taking interest in what I'm doing um, again hope that you guys can also be inspired to do what you need to do to get your build goals sorted out um, yeah looking forward to making some new content obviously part two will come out um, don't forget to like and subscribe and goodbye for now adios